Hey guys, and welcome to what is going to be a new series called The Level Up. This is episode one. Of course, if you've not ever seen a video of mine before, this deserves a little bit of an introduction. So The Level Up is going to be, as good as it sounds, it's going to be a documentation of my process as a natural bodybuilder in the final stages of my off-season, which has been, as I'll explain in a little while, two-year off-season into my shows, my planned shows in 2020. So I plan to compete in 2020. This is the rest of my off-season. I'm gonna document it with a weekly update. These videos will be available on my member site on a weekly basis. I did wanna pop one up on my YouTube channel, as many of you will have experienced the series that I did with Boston Bound. It's gonna be a very similar style in the sense that I'm gonna just be recording with my iPhone. I'm gonna be capturing one workout a week and talking you guys through it, giving rationale behind the movement selection, volume, intensity, where my frequency is at, how I'm performing exercises, everything will be discussed. And and this is really where I wanted to drive my content on the members site. I was feeling like I was coming to a bit of a brick wall with uh, working with amazing videographers, but essentially just doing what everyone else was doing. I'm not happy doing that. I'm not happy putting up the same trailer that JP's got, the same trailer that you know Ryan's got, the same trailer that someone else has got. It's just like repetitive stuff. And as much as I think this offers value, motivation, and fantastic content, and I love it, it's not what I'm about. I've always been about trying to have a degree of individual individualization and trying to stand out from the pack with what I do. And, and this is what I want to document here is, is, is this isn't necessarily individualization because a lot of people do these styles of videos, but it is in the sense that no one's me and no one can be me. So you following my journey is a very individualized way for you to have an insight into, into what I do on a daily basis to take me from A to B and to improve my physique and, and to get it on stage in 2020 and, and hopefully achieve what I want to achieve. So. For those of you that are potentially watching this on YouTube and have never ever watched a video of mine before, my name's AJ, I'm 23 years old, as I repeatedly get incorrectly, thought I was 24 last birthday, I'm not. I am a coach primarily, so I coach through Team MBM and we have a good array of very successful athletes on stage this year within natural bodybuilding. And I have done that since 2015. Um, been in the industry since 2014, and I started off as a one-to-one personal trainer. And I did that for a whole year before realizing that I really wanted to invest my time into online coaching. And I built my business and my brand and what I do from that point onwards. So from 2015 to now, I've been growing my brand. So pretty much, you know, four years of consistent work and growing and, and doing a lot of things for free and helping a lot of people out. And, and that's really, really what I love doing. It's my, it's my passion. Um, I love this sport. I love everything about the bodybuilding industry, whether it's drug free, whether it's assisted. I absolutely love it. And I'm very passionate about what I do. And I hope that I can share a little bit of my journey with you guys in a little bit more detail by doing these on a weekly basis. I've outlined this day, Saturday, as a day where I can dedicate to producing content because I realized that with my current client load, I had to start to, well, I basically stopped producing. I had a podcast and I still have the podcast and I absolutely love it. But again, you can only do so many Q and A's without your brains falling out. And I felt like I was answering the same questions week in, week out. And I want to produce another more perhaps enjoyable way for you to listen to my updates, get a perspective on my journey without having to record necessarily an hour's worth of content in one day. It was actually giving me, I don't know, more producing anxiety, so to speak. I was worried about having to sit in front of a camera for an hour and produce that because I felt the overwhelming pressure of having to do so. So I thought let's do something a bit different, a bit fun, novel stimulus, and give you guys some new content. So bear with me, I've recorded this already about seven times. I'm really rusty with YouTube and I'm a little bit nervous because I know potentially how many people will be interested in watching this kind of thing. So I'm a little bit nervous, but bear with me. So where I'm at right now, I'm at the end of my off season pretty much. So you're gonna get the sort of the last push, so to speak. Um, of this off season. It's been a two year off season. It's been very productive. I've had touch wood, very, very minimal injuries and very, very minimal issues. 
within every aspect of it, within the psychological side of things, like the physical side of things as well. And obviously I've had a, a very fruitful off season in the sense that I've had a lot of balance and I've met my girlfriend, you know, we've been together for a year and it's been, uh, there's been a lot of positive things that have come out of taking time away from the stage. And now I'm ready, very ready psychologically to approach this final phase, which is gonna be basically pushing my body weight up and getting myself into a position where I'm going to be able to attack my prep and make the most of it. And essentially hop on stage with a lot of improvements comparative to when I last competed, which if you didn't know, was 2017 where I won the WMBF Worlds as a junior. I came second at the BMBF finals as a junior uh, to Tafa Meiji, who's a fantastic junior and I won all of my other junior qualifiers. So I, 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 I almost was undefeated as a junior, but Taff, you're too good. <laughs> uh, which reminds me, I can always get better. I can always get better. And I think even in now, nowadays with the juniors, I think I'd struggle to, 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 to beat a lot of these guys, you know, like Jack, one of my, my juniors, Josh Bailey, uh, those two guys are, are absolutely incredible athletes. And I think I'd, I'd really struggle up against those guys. Um, but nevertheless, we digress. So the goal for 2020 is simply to, to turn up improved, guys. And I think a lot of the time people put this pressure or, or overwhelming desire to, to just, just purely win. And I'd be very much lying if I said that I didn't want to win. But to tell you that I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to win is void and impossible for me to do. I cannot possibly determine my result on the day. I don't know who's gonna, who's gonna turn up next year. I know which shows I plan to do. They're gonna be some of the most competitive shows of the season. And all I can do is just pour every ounce of effort into the goal. And I promise you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the entire process next year. I'm gonna do these weekly updates. Most of them will go on the member site. I'll chuck an occasional one up on YouTube like this but I'm gonna show you how much time and dedication I'm gonna give this. And, and, I, and I hope that that gives you an idea of whether bodybuilding in a natural, in the natural sense of the citizen, whether a bodybuilding prep is right for you, because it's gonna take a lot. Um, and I am more, more than prepared to, to, to give it what, it what it takes. So that's pretty much an update on me. I'm sitting at about 185 pounds at the moment. Highest body weight of this off season has been about 190 to 193. So I'm comfortable at this body weight and I'm definitely aiming to take it higher. If anything, if there's an arbitrary number I'm aiming for, it's probably anywhere between 195 and 200 in good condition. I got to 193 last time in fairly good shape. I will now relay some of my most recent check-in photos as I'll do in every single video. And I will talk you through a little bit sort of about where I'm at body composition wise. So. In terms of this body comp, I carry body fat pretty evenly. So I don't really have an area that's getting more fat than, than another. I think that if I was to pinpoint areas that are fatter than than, than way, maybe where, I, where I'd like them to be in the future, if they were to gain more body fat, the glutes are probably an area that I need to keep an eye on just because they do, they do hold a lot and they're the hardest to get lean. So when you push up, be prepared to monitor your fattest body parts that are the most of a struggle to get lean when you're coming down. So for me, I know my glutes and my hamstrings are areas to monitor. However, everywhere else, like abdominals, lower back and upper body is, is in good condition and my, my waist is staying small. I've implemented a lot of vacuums into this off season and I think my, my midsection and abdominal like control and connection is a lot better as a result. Something that I would influence a lot of people to try and form in their off season is that connection to their abdominal muscles being able to keep them tight and sucked in. You'll see in my course turns, I'm able to keep that area tight. I think that's really important. And then outside of that, like I said, calories are decently high. List my diet in the information box below so you can so you can look at that and, and see what you think. And outside of that, let's, let's sort of get into this, what, what has been a, my pool session yesterday, which has left me in an absolute pit of recovery today which I'll talk about a bit more. And I'm not just saying that for, for, for attention or for a joke, it's, it's actually really quite buried me. And um, the reason being is that the, the, this day, this full session that I did yesterday, as you'll see is very systemically taxing. I've chosen a movement, my first movement, nothing prior to it. 
where it's going to essentially create a large systemic demand, okay? So my full body recovery, my, my central nervous system recovery is gonna take a big hit out of this one movement. I like to term movements like this as atomic bombs or nuclear bombs. So you have like a standard bomb. So a standard bomb would be like, I don't know, something like lesser dominance, like for example, a leg press or a dumbbell RDL if you're fairly weak at them. That would be like a bomb. It would create some degree of an acute area of, 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 of issues amongst the bomb site. Whereas you, you plummet a nuclear bomb down there, that's a deadlift, that's a back squat. You know, that's a, that's a big compound movement that's gonna create not only an acute level of soreness in an area like your erectors, your hamstrings, your glutes, but it's gonna create more of a whole body fatigue response, which is gonna take not only 24 hours, but potentially 72 hours to recover from. Maybe for, for some people who are very, very strong, perhaps even longer. And your ability to regulate your autonomic nervous system that parasympathetic to sympathetic branch is going to be very, very difficult within that window because you're so heavily systemically taxed that your fatigue levels are climbed so much. You're spending more time in that sympathetic dominant state. You're releasing a lot of adrenaline, cortisol, you're watering, your resting heart rate's crept up, your sleep quality is diminishing. And that's why you've almost got to consider this, this idea, this of this stimulus versus fatigue ratios in, in, within training, which Dr. Mike Isratol talks about a lot. Um, very, very clever guy and one that I, I recommend following. In terms of the, the movement selection on this day, so we start with the deadlift. I, I do two sets. The reason why I do two sets is I simply can't perform anymore. I, I can't fathom doing any more than two sets on a deadlift at the moment. They are both taken to a point where I know that if I was to do one more rep, it would be a rep that would absolutely break me. It would just ruin me and, and really wreck my central nervous system further. But outside of that, the, the sets are taken to a point where execution is just basically kept the same. You'll look at the first rep of the 185 for 10, and you'll see that it's very similar in control, speed, range of motion as the last one. And that's something that I want to remind you guys the importance of is regulation of your execution. Like the first rep should look the same as the last. So really do consider that within your training. Does your first rep look very similar to, to the last rep? We move away from the deadlift and I went on to a supported move. So one supported move or, or that I like at the moment is the Atlantis T-bar. You'll see the angle of the back pad is actually slightly high in comparison to a normal T-bar row. This would create a little bit more dominance of the upper back musculature, but not much. I actually feel this in the mid back due to where the grip width on the handles are. You want to aim to keep your chest on the pad as much as possible with this exercise and really driving those elbows back. I really do like to stay a little bit longer in that lengthened range, but that's up to you. And whether you have any shoulder impingement or issues there really does depend as to how long you can spend in that lengthened range. Luckily for me, touch wood, not got any shoulder issues at the moment. So I can spend a lot of time in that lengthened range, create a lot of muscle damage under mechanical tension, and then we can drive our elbows back and really get a good contraction. We move from the T-bar into a, an Atlantis plate loaded single arm row. Fairly, fairly similar to the hammer strength row here. But it's not a hammer strength throw, so we're not going to call it a hammer row. It's actually an Atlantis piece. So we're going to focus here on keeping one hand as a stability anchor on the chest pad. We're going to drive our, our body weight backwards and almost like we're sitting down a little bit, but not much. We're going to create a little bit of dominance to the upper body to, or the torso to be sat backwards and the chest high. We're going to let this, the arm drift away from our body and get that good stretch again. And we're going to aim to create this idea of pulling the elbow down towards the hip. So a lot of people think back with the elbows. And then in that angle, that, that point, you're probably going to end up targeting a lot of the upper back musculature by pure pulling the elbow at, at, a, at a backwards angle. Instead, let's just think about drag, drag the elbow down. So think about dragging the elbow down towards the hip. Once we're at the hip, try and think about bringing the elbow around and around the back of the spine, if you could. Obviously, the actual feasibility of dragging the elbow back down and around the back of the spine with, you know, 65 kilos loaded is probably not going to happen. But the idea and the imagination of that will create a really good connection with your lats. I did one top set of 65 for nine and two down sets with, with 60 kilos. Um, again, on the T-bar, a one top set of five to nine and then two down sets with again probably one rep and reserve on the back sets uh, the back offsets to the down sets whatever you want to call them they are more there to accumulate 
volume as opposed to create maximal mechanical tension. So we use our top set to create maximal mechanical tension. We use our down sets to, to create volume. I moved then on to a chest supported pull down plate loaded. This machine is one of those machines where the resistance profile is awful, but it just feels good for some reason. So the what we've got to realize in simple terms is that when we look at resistance profile of machine, we want to try and match it to the strength profile of the muscle we're trying to work. So in this moment, we're looking at the strength profile of the lats, which in this motion will most likely go from strong up here to weak down here, right? When we're fully contracted. So it makes sense for the machine to have a resistance profile of heavy to light. But this machine is the opposite. It's light to heavy. And that's just dependent on where the lever arms, people who know more about this can explain this in more detail than me. All you need to know is that. But on this machine, for some reason, whether it's where I placed it in the workout or perhaps just the other biomechanical considerations we have to take into account, it felt pretty good. For argument's sake, I'd be better off using the prime piece, loading it on setting three, which you'll see second to this, and actually having a drop off at the bottom range. So having it heavy in the lengthened position, lightest in, in the shortened. We moved on to the prime upper back row after doing three sets of the plate loaded pull down. And we did three sets and a drop set on the, on the upper back movement. I really like to do quite a lot of upper back work. I think having a dense upper back shows in all shots, um, even, for, even, even in the side poses, just having density in the upper back area is something that I really do like and something that I think most people should work on. We then moved on to a rope pullover, which was actually done with some grips that I've only used once before in my life, but they just, they fit the hand amazingly well. You just put your hand in them and you just immediately grip them. They're fantastic. And we're driving the elbows down, we're contracting the lats with this. So we're really thinking about slow motion. And again, we we'll almost think of that dragging motion as opposed to a pull. So a lot of people do a pull over, a pull down, pull down, it's more so called. And they, and they, just, they just yank it. Yeah, yank. Um, what you actually want to think is, is dragging. So just think about dragging down to, to the hips with, with the elbows. Move then onwards to, to bicep movements. Very simple here, just some D-handle curls, which again sort of tax the bicep in, in more of that shortened range because the maximal loading will end up being here. Um, Dad did some hammer curls just seated with dumbbells. Again, we're looking at three sets and a drop set on most of the bicep movements. Bicep movement volume at the moment is the highest it has been for me. Usually that works out as sort of eight sets per, per session. Um, four sets on the days that aren't pull, eight sets on the days that are pull. And then a rear delts, which I actually did on the floor, which I think creates a little bit more stability. So give that a shot if you, if you haven't tried that. I think honestly, that's the only way I can ever load my rear delts with anything remotely heavy. Anything light, I'll go for a reverse pec deck or a standing face ball. I finished with, with some triceps, which I actually did a single arm move, which in the video actually set up really poorly. So don't copy that. You'd actually want to come away from the machine like so and drag down. Why might you ask is because again, we're looking at creating heavy to light. And what I was actually creating here at this angle, which you'll see, was I actually was just creating light to heavy, which makes no sense. So again, we all do things at a stupid time and again, and, and that that was um, stupid. Yeah, I mean, it didn't it didn't feel bad, but it but but from a resistance profile perspective, it makes zero sense. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my session. It was a twelve out of ten session. Uh, I won't always have twelve out of ten sessions, but that one was specifically good. And I had forty five grams of carbs intra workout, thirty protein from Pepto Pro. Again, just eliciting that muscle protein synthesis response and creating some uh, glycogen also throughout the session, which in these longer sessions, I think is pivotal. Uh, no pre-workouts, no caffeine at the moment. And now I'm going to lead you into my post-workout meal. And I hope you enjoyed this sort of walkthrough of the, of the session. Um, enjoy the rest of the clips and I will see you guys very soon. So guys, I thought I'd cap off this first episode of the series with my current post-workout meal, as I'm sure you guys absolutely love anything to do with food. So this meal, or the, the, the rationale behind this meal is, is simply just foods that sit well with me at the moment. And also in the 
sort of the overall context of my day, this makes sense because currently I haven't had any vegetables and these vegetables just sit where really well with me. They're easy to digest. They're just a vegetable stir fry mix, which allows me to get in a variety of vegetables in a quick and easy fashion. So there's 200 grams of 5% mince there and a bit of, of the vegetable stir fry. And then we've got a packet of jasmine rice. Again, jasmine rice just sits really, really well with me. Fruits, always a really good carbohydrate. I've already had quite a lot of fruit today, but more is not a problem. And I think people need to worry less about fructose in the diet. You'd have to have a crazy amount of fructose to cause an issue. Um, and in terms of the replenishment of glycogen, again, with fructose, you don't need to specifically worry about the amount I'm having here. If you were having gallons of orange juice, perhaps, or kilograms of fruit, maybe. Um, but in this context, again, it's nothing to worry about. And again, from an antioxidant perspective, obviously, these do have antioxidants in them. But in such a low quantity, we don't, again, have to be worried to the effects that antioxidants can have in terms of blunting the um the, the the response from a muscular perspective in terms of inflammatory responses okay so it has been shown in some research that antioxidants can blunt that response and that is a response that we want in this window we actually want to have that response and then we can obviously blunt it later in the day um with with taking them away from the workout but and the quantities that I'm having them in, it's, it's just, it is void. And then this, I, I, I eat this first because it's the best bit. Um, some people would eat this last. So I actually go, this is the order. So I go bagel, that, whilst it's still hot, and then those to finish. Uh, what order would you eat this in? Let me know. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this this first episode. If I don't manage to, to film sort of a bit of an outro, because um, I've probably had the introduction at the start. These will be very frequent. These will be every single week with a different workout every single time and just trying to teach you as much as I possible can, possibly can uh, in video format. All right, guys, speak to you soon.